officers. Welcome to the meeting of the Southern Development Control Committee. Um, I think by now it's hardly necessary, but I will draw your attention, as I must, uh, to the uh, fire regulations, which are on the screen behind me. And could you make sure, please, your phones are switched to silent or off, and that your uh, card is firmly into the console. Um, before we uh, get round to um, looking at the applications, can I just remind you who we have here in the officer team? I think by now they're familiar faces, but we have Lewis Jones from uh, a legal team. We've got Steve Weaver, who is our interim development control manager. Louise Jandel, who is the area team leader for Southern and Western. Seamless, you see Louise now, seamless. And Kaylee Taylor, who's the <laughs> planning officer, who's uh, going to be dealing with uh, one of the applications tonight. Oh, we do have some members of the public, so welcome. Um, let's move on then to the main items. Uh, do we have any... Um, oh, sorry, the minutes of the meeting. They have been laid on the table. Are you quite happy for me to sign them at the end of this meeting? Uh, apologies for absence, Emma. Uh, none received. Uh, put my glasses on, it'd be much better, wouldn't it? Declarations of interest, do we have any before the meeting? None before the meeting, but Hazemere Town Councillors uh, declare a non pecuniary interest um, in the applications on the agenda. Uh, Councillor Edward? Right. Any questions from members of the public, Emma? Uh, none received, Chairman. Steve, have you got any relevant updates to government guidance or something to tell us about? Thank you, Chairman. Yes, well, not, not government guidance, but uh, Waverley's local plan, which, of course, has been adopted since uh, this committee last sat um, and is now uh, all the policies within it have full weight for the purposes of uh, development management decision making. Um, you'll see in the reports before you this evening, there are still references um, to uh, saved policies of the old local plan. Those are retained policies um, and uh, also a reference to what at the time when we drafted the report was still a draft local plan 2018. Well, that's now the local plan 2018. And as I said, all those policies do have full weight and uh, the officers will draw out uh, any any uh, relevant, uh, particularly pertinent policies to you this evening as we go through the reports. Thank you. Thank you, Stephen. This should be more or less the last time that we have to do that, won't it? I think we'll be in the cycle soon so that we don't have to go back and, and sort of amend things that were in draft form. Uh, how about our performance against government targets, please? Yes, thank you again. So if I can take members to page five uh, of your agenda papers. So this is a standing item, and um, again, the last time this was considered, you had the figures uh, relating to the period from the 1st of uh, April last year to the end of December. You've now got the figures to the end of January this year. Uh, in terms of speed of performance, uh, that's, been, that's been maintained and, and slightly enhanced by 0.1%. Um, so we're edging even further past the 98% performance on majors, which is clearly excellent performance. Um, and in respect of the non-major performance, again, that's nudged up from last time as well. So um, all on track, uh, well in excess of government targets uh, and reflects an awful lot of very hard work of, of, of all the team. When it comes to the uh, performance in relation to quality, you'll recall that's in relation to uh, the way the government uh, measures that is in terms of appeal overturns. Um, if I start with the non-majors, um, the figure has gone slightly up, but only marginally um, uh, for the best estimate figure from April 17 to 31st of January 18. Um, you will see the figure in respect of the majors is at about 9%. Now, that may ring alarm bells, but what we don't know at this point in time is what the actual assessment period rolling forward is going to be from the government. All you've got there, that 9%, is what appeal decisions we've had in, how many have been overturns in the period between April and the end of January, against the number of major decisions made between April and January. They're not the same cases, in other words, because some of the appeal decisions coming through are from earlier decisions. Um, so until we get the assessment period coming through, 
um, for the next wave, it's impossible to say exactly where we stand, but it kind of gives a clue as a, as a direction of travel, and clearly we have had a sequence of um, approvals uh, by inspectors, contrary to um, officer and committee decisions. With the local plan in place, that should give us a firmer footing going forwards uh, for our decisions where refusals are in prospect. In terms of the last assessment period, so the, the little box that says 8%, what we've done there is we've built in the two uh, decisions that came through in January, which were allowed. However, Waverley has not been designated. Uh, the designated authorities have now been publicised. We've not been designated, so it's probably fair to assume that the government has guillotined uh, the results as they stood at the end of December. And at that point, it was 6.4%, which is what I reported last time. Um, so we'll keep reporting these figures, but until on the quality figure, until we get the next assessment period through, I think it's difficult to be absolutely precise, but we'll just we'll keep monitoring the situation and obviously look closely at any appeal decisions coming back. We've got a crop waiting to come back um, that are now affected by the new local plan, and we'll need to see what messages come out of that. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. I don't really want to turn this item generally into a great big discussion because tonight we've got time. We've only got two items, but on the other hand, the weather's poor. So, you know, if you really do have... A question on this you have your agenda and I suggest you try and get them asked before the meeting rather than during the meeting but uh, Councillor Edwards you wish to speak thank you chairman uh, just a quick one um, what I am concerned about uh, recently there was a um, an, a, a, an appeal against the uh, Waverley ruling with regard to car parking uh, with a new flat put into into the roof and the inspector reported back that there wasn't a problem in parking in Hindhead. Well, this is madness. I don't understand where this inspector came from. And I've, I think we should appeal against that because it's completely wrong. We have constant problems with parking in Hindhead. Uh, uh, the vice chairman will confirm that. I just don't understand his reasoning. Thank you, Councillor Edwards. One of the reasons I don't want to turn it into a discussion is it just triggers other thoughts and other people want to speak. So I'll take Councillor around, but I would rather then move on to the business of the meeting if I could. And Councillor Adams after Councillor Round, and then please can we move on to the business? Otherwise, we'll never get home in the. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair, and I'll try to be very brief as well. I, I just wonder, I assume from reading the English that these percentages are simply based upon the number of appeals and are not qualified in any way to reflect the gravity or size of the appeal, and therefore are a pretty crude measure. Am I right? Don't. Yeah, uh, through you, Chairman, yes, it, it is a pretty crude measure, but it, it's, it's split down between majors and non-major applications. But the reality is, yeah, it's major applications, which are 10 dwelling, 10 dwellings or 1,000 dwellings. They're all majors. Um, but quite, yes, it, it, is, it is a crude measure, but that's the measure that the government's put in place. Thank you. And Councillor Adams? <coughs> well, I think March is going to be the uh, key month. Um, if uh, some of those go against us, I think it would be useful if our n m end of March um, uh, meeting had light... Um, applications as well because there'll be a lot to talk about then right thank you as i say i'm not trying to normally uh, stop discussion it's just that as i say the weather is so awful people have got to get home and i really think we could discuss this item for hours so if we could if you're quite happy move on to the the business of the meeting i'd rather do that as i say i'm not trying to stop you asking questions of the officers but just if we could do get into the habit of doing the discussion before the meeting that would be a great help so can we move on then, please, to um, the business of the meeting, uh, which uh, is application number WA27, uh, sorry, 2017-1857, uh, the land to the rear of Haas Cross, 48 Petworth Road, Hazelmere, and Louise is going to take us through the reason that this has been brought back into us. Thank you, Chairman. Um, members will recall that the app this application for two dwellings was presented to committee last month where members resolved to refuse the application for...
Council have discussed this reason for refusal with the County Highway Authority, who have concluded that in their expert view, the reason for refusal is not sustainable and they would not be able to support the Council in defending the application at any appeal. They have recommended that if members are concerned with existing speeds, a condition could be recommended as part of an appeal to require a vehicle activated speed limit sign to address the existing speeding issues along the eastbound side of Petworth Road. They consider that, this consider that this condition would be reasonable and they would support us at an appeal on that basis. Following this discussion, um, officers are concerned that proceeding with the reason for refusal against the views of our expert consultees on a technical matter which is not one of judgment could result in award of costs at appeal against us. As such, officers have brought this back to committee to enable the members to reconsider their resolution in light of the advice received. Following this advice, officers therefore recommend that this particular reason for refusal in relation to highways is withdrawn. Please can I also draw members' attention to the update sheet, which summarises a council's opinion that has been received from the applicant, setting out their view that all reasons for refusal are unsustainable. Officers consider that the fourth reason for refusal is justified in the lack of an appropriate legal agreement, and the reasons for refusal in relation to design and neighbour impact are both matters of judgment that are much more likely, or sorry, much less likely, sorry, to result in an award of costs against the council. As such, um, they do not the officers do not recommend any of the other reasons for refusal are withdrawn. The update also makes some changes in relation to the three reasons for refusal that it recommend that the council has recommended, removing reference to the draft local plan following its adoption and removing reference to policies that have been deleted. In conclusion, um, the officer recommendation is now that permission be refused for the three reasons that members agreed at the last committee and the fourth reason in relation to the highways issue be removed in light of the advice from the highway authority and the opinion from officers that this could result in an award of costs against the council. Thank you, members. Thank you, members. This is an unusual one to, to, to come back to us. It's quite timely with the change from the draft policies to the local plan. So in some ways, it, it fits in well with the timetable. Um, so over to you. We're going to move straight to the recommendation. Hold on. Gosh. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Councillor Isherwood. Sorry. Uh understand fully the uh, uh, sidelines and everything else on the amended access. Just moves the uh, uh, exit onto the road a little closer to the brow of the hill, which uh, Surrey Highway is considered to be adequate and safe. Um, what I do want to point out, though, is that the enforcement action taken uh, some time ago, 2013, has not been complied with fully. The uh, hardcore, the rubbish and everything else is still there. And if you were to look at it as I did uh, earlier today, from the point of view of Littlefield, the, they would be looking out of their kitchen, basically up at the bottom of the cars and everything else driving past there. I find it totally unsatisfactory that enforcement action has not been completed five years after we uh, took action on this matter. So I feel quite strongly uh, about that, but uh, I take the officer's point that the, uh, we can't appeal on highways grounds, we won't get support and therefore it's unsound, um, but I do recommend that enforcement action is taken on the 2013 application. Sorry. Uh, yes, can I just get... Uh, are you going to write names yes, down for me? <laughs> Concentrate. <Yeah. laughs> um, do the office, uh, can the officers confirm that one of them will take this up with enforcement so that we know that this is going to be followed up, please? Yeah, we have raised this with enforcement following um, last month's meeting and we will follow it up again following, following this meeting. Sorry, Councillor Nels. Can we not add a condition that no, no work is to start? Should um, the appeal be successful, 
no work is to start until there is full compliance with the enforcement notice. Officers? Um, in, in my view, unfortunately, that wouldn't be a reasonable condition. Um, they are, they are two separate things, um, and if the um, appeal is allowed, um, then it would be unlikely that an inspector would, would support a condition of that nature. Thank you, Chairman. I'm sure you're not satisfied, Councillor Inchbald, but I don't think there's much we can do there. Councillor Knowles? Thank you, Chairman. I, I, on that same point, because there has been a reply this week, which we have been copied into, which from enforcement saying, oh, we'll see how it goes Wednesday night, because if you make a planning application, you can ignore any enforcement, and quite clearly that's what's been happening. And I think that should be quite clearly in the report to the inspector that, so they're aware of that. I would also like to make sure that the professional transport report is also sent to the inspector, because that disagrees with the Surrey highways. We have a professional report and we have Surrey's. And I think that they both need to go forward. And let's not forget that Surrey Highway said they didn't care about people breaking the speed limit. That wasn't their problem. And make sure that that goes forward as well, because I think that was reckless. Thank you, Councillor Nils. Uh, Louise, do you want to comment on that? Um, just to advise that all representations are sent to the inspectorate um, for every appeal we receive. So the inspectorate would have that um, report that was received from the neighbouring residents. Thank you. Councillor Edwards, did you indicate? Uh, yes, thank you, Chairman. Um, I was concerned about the enforcement action. And I went to see planning yesterday, planning enforcement yesterday to, to, to go through this particular um, problem. And um, I believe that they believe that, you know, that they've complied with the enforcement no, uh, order. Um, I couldn't see it, but that's what they told me, so that's all I can say, you know, because I was concerned and that, you know, anyway, I just thought I'd mention that. Thank you. Thank you. Well, we'll rely on the officers to liaise a bit on that one, if you would, Louise, just to make sure that if there is a breach, that it is dealt with and, and that everyone is aware fully of, of the situation. I think that's as much as we can do at the moment. Does anybody else wish to speak on this matter? In that case, shall we move to the recommendation, which is uh, the revised recommendation on your um, update sheet is the clearest. There are a lot of papers in your report. But on page two, bottom of page two of the update sheet, you have the revised recommendation, which is uh, that permission be refused, and it's the three reasons, having removed the one that uh, basically Surrey wouldn't support were it to go to appeal. Is everyone quite contented with that. Everyone understands what we're doing here. In that case, can I see all those in favour of refusing permission? Uh, that's unanimous. Thank you very much, members. I thought that might be slightly more complicated than it was, so I'm delighted. So, shall we move on then, please, to our next application? Application item B1, WA 2017-2324, the Coach House, Eglinton Road in Rushmore. And uh, this is a change of use from agricultural to residential use class C3 of an existing track and alterations to the surfacing. And it's Kayleigh Taylor, I think, who's going to take us through this, please. Thank you, Chairman. This application has been brought before the area committee at a request of a local member. The application site, outlined in red, is located to the east of Eglinton Road, shown here. The site comprises a detached dwelling, which is accessed via a shared driveway, with the first cottage shown here. So the shared driveway comes along here, across here, and there's the first, first cottage, and here's the dwelling of the application site. This application seeks permission for the change of use of an equestrian track, reinforcement and extension to provide access to the coach house. The diagram below shows how the track would be reinforced. There would be plastic units installed below the surface of the track, which would then be planted with grass. 
These photographs show the existing site. Photograph A shows the track um, running adjacent to the gardener's farm to the right. So just here. Um, photo B is looking back at the gate as it adjoins the existing shared access, which you can see just down here. Photograph C shows further up the track towards the bend, just around here. And photograph D shows a view towards the house. These matters, um, sorry, the matters of principle and technical judgment are the impact on trees. The council's tree officer has considered the proposal. The trees affected are well set back from public vantage points and as such the proposal would not result in harm to trees of public amenity value. Impact on highways. The County Highway Authority has raised no objection to the application. The proposed access would adjoin the existing shared access and would not directly adjoin the adopted highway. And the effect on the SPAs. The proposal is not likely to increase the number of people permanently residing at the site as such no objection is regained is raised on the effect of the SPAs. The matters of planning judgment, which councillors are asked to consider this evening, are the impact on the green belt. Officers consider that the proposal constitutes an engineering operation that will preserve the openness of the green belt and would not conflict with the purposes of including the land within the green belt. It is therefore considered that the operation development and associated change of use is appropriate green belt development. The impact on visual amenity and landscape character. Officers consider that the proposed access would have a grass finish and as such would be in keeping with the verdant character of the area. Furthermore, it would be seen within the context of existing residential development. Um, and impact on residential amenity. Officers are satisfied that there is acceptable separation distances to neighbouring properties. Please can I turn members' attention to the update sheet. Since the preparation of the agenda, the Council has adopted the Waverley Borough Local Plan Part 1. As such, full weight can be given to the policies contained within this plan. Certain policies of the 2002 Local Plan have not been retained and therefore no longer given weight in the assessment of this application. This does not alter the overall conclusions of the report or the officer recommendation. The recommendation is that permission be granted as set out on pages 67 to 68 of the agenda. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Kayla. Very concise. Um, I presume Councillor Adams is going to kick us off with this one. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Yes, um, the picture painted by the um, officers in this case is rather incomplete. Um, to start with, the relevant planning history on page 50, 16, 59 um, omits the um, very relevant fact that planning permission was given for the demolition of stables um, and the uh, su substitution of those stables by the coach house. Um, prior to that, the only access to this site was down the um, north side which is not shown in any great detail on that picture, but it actually runs, and that is the one that is in use today. The, the plant, yeah, track B. Now, the, uh, there was no track down the proposed, where it says proposed reinforced track. Uh, there was no track originally. I mean, I'm not saying that horses weren't, um, you, didn't use um, the woodland, which is, that's all woodland there. Um, but there was no track prior to the demolition of the stables. Though, in fact, the demolition of the track that is now asked for request was, in fact, refused on that application. Now, the, um, <clears throat> so the demolition of the stables provided the, uh, uh, the base material for the construction of this track, which then took place. Um, enforcement was called in, and um, the, uh, as it says here, there is uh, open enforcement due to the alleged breach. That was all trees right up to the boundary before 
um, this track was created, which was only a few years ago. Um, so the, the issue here is um, the reason that it's come to planning permission is because that currently there is an agreement between enforcement and the landowner that they will not use this track until this is decided tonight. So that if we refuse it, then enforcement will um, act. Um, if we approve it, then obviously that overrides any enforcement. But this track is totally unnecessary because the Route B is a very adequate access to both. So the removal of trees all the way along that area and the, the construction of this um, wide track was made against a previous refusal. And my suggestion... Thank you. Would the officers like to comment at this point, or shall I take another speaker? I think, you know, we do need clarity on, on some of what Councillor Adams has said. Reassurance. Would you like some time, or shall I? Yeah. yeah. Shall we move on to Councillor Inchbold? Well, yes, this really uh, follows on what you, from what you just asked for, Chairman. I think we need to know what were the reasons for refusal when uh, the original stables were demolished and the application was put in for this track then. We, the reasons for, for refusal then are surely highly material now. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, you put it so much better than I did, but that's exactly the point. You know, we need clarification. Otherwise, we can't possibly make a, a, an informed decision. Councillor Hess? Uh, please put my mind to rest if, if, if you can, but I'm really disturbed that we've been asked to make a judgment on something which is been considered before and refused and is currently subject to enforcement action which hasn't been carried out I gather and we haven't been made aware of any of this can we have some sort of um, explanation. Exp yes explanation of, of, of why the papers seem to be so dramatically inadequate please yes thank you I mean the reason I took two councillors was so that the officers can try to give us some answers to those questions, because I think we're all in the same position. Are, are you in a position to? Right, I'll take Louise, shall I, and then, then you, Councillor. Yeah, so I've had a look through the, the planning history. Um, planning permission was granted in 2015 for a replacement um, dwelling, um, and that was granted. There's nothing on the history that says that um, permission has been refused. Um, in relation to the trees, they weren't protected, so... Um, they could come down without any permissions from us. And in relation to the enforcement history, um, the, um, in for this application has come about following investigation by the enforcement team. Thank you. Sorry, can I just clarify this? Because I think we're all in the same position here. Councillor Ab Adams clearly said that when the permission for the coach house was given, the access was along Route B at the top. And there was no... Uh, access granted along the proposed route now. So the occupiers have come along and put in a route which was not acceptable and therefore we took enforcement. And they've come in now to regularise a situation that we have taken enforcement against, if you'll pardon my English. Uh, am I interpreting that correctly? Um, we haven't taken enforcement action against them. There was a complaint from a neighbour um, and the enforcement team went out to investigate and found that the track was, was unauthorised and invited them to submit an application to regularise the situation. Thank you. Councillor Edwards, you look as confused as the rest of us. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Um, this is an inappropriate development in the Greenbelt, uh, and it's unacceptable. I don't understand why it's come back to us, you know, uh, with the proposal, with the recommendation that the officers have put. You know, I don't understand it can't. Sorry, I don't agree with it. Thank you. I think we are allowed not to understand. I think it is a, a human characteristic we are allowed. Um, Councillor Adams, you wish to come back as, unless anybody else wishes to speak before? Councillor Adams? Uh, well, I just remind everybody that this was actually in the green belt. Um, there were a lot of trees along that thing and they took down many more than were authorised by the 5.5 um, cubic metres uh, per quarter 
Um, so there was a steady removal of trees all the way along that track. This is in the core part of the green belt. There are lots um, the, uh, that's only within 400 metres of the Wilden Heath Spa. So it's you know, an area where we do value the green belt specifically for um, the fauna in the spa. Councillor Mulliner. Thank you, Chairman. <clears throat> I'll start by just asking for clarity on this. Um, Councillor Adams said there was a previous planning application to do with the erection of the coach house and demolition of the stables. And as part of that, the issue of where to place access was considered? Yes, that is my understanding. And that was the access and it bit was, was reflected. And it, no, can and it I just was stop this access this? that would Please, discuss. I don't want a two way conversation. No. You'll get your answer, uh, maybe from Councillor Adams afterwards, maybe from the officer, but please, not from each right. other. <laughs> my second point, I would like an answer to that, that one in due course. My second point is that the comment in here that the trees are not visible from the public realm strikes me as inconsistent with what the inspector said in the Barbins Grange appeal which, um, if you recall there, this was an even more el elaborate case. It was building a tennis court and pavilion, large pavilion, in an agricultural field. And this committee was, was asked twice to, to approve it and to discontinue in enforcement proceedings, which we refused to do, and it went to a public inquiry and the applicant lost. But the point the inspector made, which resonated with me was that no one can tell who will own what land in future and therefore you're meant to be preserving um, the, the appearance of the area and openness I suppose at all times so it's not very satisfactory to me certainly that if and I'm hoping for a clear answer to this the, this, the issue of this track was discussed on a previous occasion and was refused that that fact was not made clear in the, in the papers. To me, relevant planning history must include that particular fact. So if that's what happened, then I would like to gently complain that in future, anything as relevant as that should be made clear in the papers so we can take it into account. My own feeling is that if there's been a previous, re a previous refusal of a track in that position, then I would like, as others have said, to know what the reasons were then and it may be the best thing to do is to defer this application until the papers can be um, amended and we can look at this with all the facts at our disposal. I don't know whether that would be helpful and whether other members ag agree, but I do feel that I'm operating at something of a disadvantage on this matter. Thank you, Councillor Mullinet. Can we get a definitive answer on what track was agreed at the time that the coach house permission was given? So if we can get a definitive answer on whether or not their permission was given using Route B and therefore not creating a new access, then I think we know where we stand. I mean, unfortunately, I haven't got um, the, the paperwork for the previous applications, but I can see from the planning history on the site that there has only ever been one refusal um, on this site, and that was in relation to a detached triple garage and store following the demolition of an existing garage and store. So I can't see anything from the history that relates to a refusal in a relation to, um, to an access in this, in this location. But surely if it's, uh, when they gave permission for the coach house, access, as Councillor Malana said, must have been discussed and agreed, because you can't just give permission. Yes, so, yeah, so it's the northern track, the, the access which, is, which basically runs round from, oh, sorry from A to B round, round the corner. That was the access that was, was agreed at the time of that application. So am I being terribly simple here? So that was agreed, the coach house was agreed, that was the track. So this track is totally unnecessary, was created on a whim and somebody complained, brought out enforcement and they're coming in now to regularize the position but technically, there has never been any permission for a change of use for this piece of land to be a track. There hasn't, the change of use would be for, for residential, because that effectively is what the, what the track is being used. But that is correct. That is what this application is for. This application is for the access track and the associated change of use 
to residential land. So that's what uh, members are being asked to, to decide this evening, whether they consider that this <coughs> access track and the associated change of use is acceptable. Councillor Mulliner has put forward a suggestion for deferral. I, personally, I feel we can determine it this evening, but I, uh, certainly if, if anybody wants to second uh, Councillor Mulliner's suggestion for deferral, we could debate that. In which case, Councillor Inchbold? Uh, well, my understanding is that there was no track there until the, coach, until the stables were converted. And I would also just ask the question, if there was a refusal of another application regarding a garage, which you mentioned just now, Louise, why isn't that listed in the history? And if, the, if this track was, was not there until, the, coach, until it, the, the conversion took place, and, several, and a lot of trees were taken down, then that really undermines the whole thing. I'm, I'm, I am deeply unhappy about it. Councillor Isherwood? Just a, a query, actually, Chairman. Uh, Councillor Adams mentioned a planning application in 2015. Uh, just like a little more detail on that, please. Did I make a mistake? No, it's not uh, listed. Can you just turn your mic off? Thanks, Councillor Rogers. Right. Louise, you've got a full planning history there, have you? I have, yes. <laughs> Do you think you could enlighten... I mean, we need to know what is relevant to this. I mean, to me, it seems that this was created unnecessarily without permission and therefore should not be supported. I want to know what in the planning history would change my mind on that. Um, firstly, just to say, um, just because something has happened without planning permission, um, that isn't the relevant test. The relevant test is to assess what has happened against planning, current planning policy and come to a judgment as to whether you find that acceptable in, in relation to, the, to those policies. Um, there is um, history in 2015 for replacement dwelling following demolition of an existing dwelling and associated stables. So, members, do you feel ready to move to the recommendation? Nobody seemed to want to speak to a deferral, so shall we move straight to the recommendation, which... I presume it's on the update sheet, but I don't think it's changed, has it, from the... Yeah, thank you very much. Um, and the, the recommendation is that permission is granted subject to the conditions one or two which are in your agenda papers. Can I see all those in favour of granting permission, please? None. In which case, could I have an opposing recommendation, please, with a seconder? Oh, sorry. I thought, it was a, I thought it was unanimous. Yeah. I think, well, yeah, if it, if it right. Sorry. Uh, anybody against granting permission? Yeah, sorry. <laughs> it was unanimous. <laughs> I thought it was. It was, I mean, it was we're not going to do abstentions as well, are we? <laughs> no, it was a sea of hands, I saw that. Um, so could I have an alternative recommendation, please? Councillor Mulliner? Um, it looks to me as though impact on trees is the re relevant. Right. Can you just give me the alternative recommendation? That the permission be, be refused. Thank, thank you. And do you have a seconder? Thank you, Councillor Inchbold. Right, Councillor Mellon, would you like to explain why? Yes, um, I think the reading the papers, um, the impact on trees appears to be the most relevant. It appears to have been quite a bit already, but there's no excuse to allow even even more. And uh, that would seem to me an adequate reason, but perhaps officers can comment, as they usually do. Yes, it's harm to the Green Belt, isn't it, that we're um, objecting to. Councillor Inchbold? It is development in the Green Belt, which is de automatically deemed to be harmful, and there is absolutely no need for it. 
Edwards. Councillor Edwards. Um, uh, can we ask for enforcement action against the um, the existing track, please, because it's illegal. Thank you. I think I know the answer to that, but uh, Lewis, are you going to answer that, or be very quiet all evening? Well, I'm sure officers can can um, have a discussion with the enforcement team in the same in the same way that we will on the on the previous item. Um, but in terms of um, adding a condition or anything like that to to, well, it wouldn't be a condition because we're recommending refusal, but um, it wouldn't be appropriate to deal with um, tonight. Thank you. Thank you, but we will chase up the enforcement. We'll, uh, the officers will do that, I'm sure. Um, have we got any... Uh, Louise, you're going to put that into proper speaker, are you? Yeah, um, I would recommend on the basis of the discussions that you've had this evening, um, the proposal would harm the open character of the green belt due to the loss of trees. Furthermore, the proposal would constitute inappropriate green belt for which there were no very special circumstances that would outweigh this harm. The proposal would therefore conflict with policy RE2 of the Waverley Borough Local Plan Part 1 2018 and paragraphs 87 to 90 of the MPPF 2012. Right, members, so we, we have an alternative uh, recommendation this time that permission be refused. Can I see all those, please, in favour of refusing permission? That's unanimous. <laughs> in that case, I think that completes the business. Of... Yes, certainly. Thank you, Chairman, for your indulgence. Um, members, obviously, at last item, we've, we've, you felt in an awkward position. Obviously, we've been trying to find answers for you on the basis of what we've got. If, when you read your order papers, you see something which doesn't chime with your understanding of the situation, can I make a plea that you raise that with officers, if at all possible, before the committee meeting, because we're in a much better position to look at planning histories, unearth the, the, the sequence of events that have led to uh, situations arising, rather than trying to do it here at the table with you know, with resources, but not with the full resources of the planning department at our disposal. So I can simply put that over to you. We're perfectly happy to take questions that you have about what you read. Um, but if it is matters of fact, as, as I think that was the question tonight, um, if we can have that in advance of the meeting, if at all possible, it will help us help you. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. No, thanks, Steve. I mean, that's a good point. And it, it applies to so much of it. If we really don't understand something, we should uh, immediately get clarification. Uh, Councillor Adams. Uh, may I just comment that I have discussed this case with um, Louise some, some weeks ago. I'm sure there was nothing personal in the comment. As a general rule, Councillor Adams, it makes much more sense if we see something in our papers or see something missing that we go to the officers before the meeting because, as uh, Steve says, they've then got all the uh, information that they can give us. So. Um, thank you very much, Julie. Good piece of, of uh, advice to finish on. So, safe journey home, everybody.